Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. She is somebody that can really help you change your life and move it forward. She is a fantastic mindset coach, a life coach, many different skills she has to help a lot of people. And we're going to talk about one thing that centers around a lot of us, your self-esteem. And if you're finding yourself just, just don't feel good about yourself. Maybe it's your self-esteem. Sherry Atchison joins us. Hey, Sherry, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm real good. I'm real good. How would you define self-esteem? Well, self-esteem is your overall opinion of, of uh, your self-worth, how you're feeling about yourself, your confidence le level, and how much you trust yourself. And there's a lot of factors that really negate all of this, especially, you know, a lot of times when we're kids growing up and we get into school, peer pressure and everything. So there's a lot of outside factors. I'm glad you said the word trust, because I think a lot of us, maybe we don't think about it or we don't admit it, but we don't really trust ourselves. And if you can't trust yourself, who can you trust? Yeah, exactly. And that has everything to do with it, because if you don't trust yourself, you absolutely do not trust other people. You might falsely think you do, hmm. but it really all comes down to knowing who you are, believing in yourself before you can honest to God, trust another person. Yeah. It's even the decisions that you make on a daily basis. If you, we all do it. I mean, I, you know, I was questioning something earlier today. I was like, should I, did I make that right choice? And you know, sometimes we don't know, you know, we're just kind of, I hate to use a cliche flying by the seat of your pants, but other times you go by your gut and you make a decision and, and you trust it and you, you, you abide by it and you're comfortable with it. But how do you, how do you raise your self-esteem? If you feel that, yeah, you know what? I don't have a lot of confidence. I'm not comfortable talking in a group of people, even about myself. How do you raise that up? Yeah, and that's a really good question. And I think the first thing to address is the labels that people put on us, you know, especially like if we're kids and we have an authority figure and they never really complimented us or anything like that. Or if you had friends and they picked on you or you were someone who was bullied at school, you, you kind of attach yourself to these labels, especially if you don't, if you don't have a healthy self-esteem. So one way to boost your self-esteem is to really acknowledge the beautiful things about yourself, regardless of what anyone else says. And if that comes down to even making a list of this is what I like, this is what I don't like, and get to know yourself instead of always relying on people outside of you to tell you what you're all about. And and so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, is to respect yourself and respect that, you know, this, this is my talent or this is what I'm good at. And I own this, I own this, and I'm not going to let anyone take it away. And when you do show self-respect and you learn to respect who you are, you actually learn how to respect other people. You learn what respect is all about. And that is honoring what is unique about yourself. And then also you learn to honor what's unique about other people. And um, then to trust, we, you know, we have to talk about self-trust because a lot of times we don't learn trust because no one made us feel validated or that we were enough or that we mattered. And so if we went and made a decision and someone chastised us for making that decision or cut us down or whatever, well, we stop trusting the decisions that we make. A lot of times we start second guessing ourselves mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people with low self-esteem try to people please. And this is why we have a hard time making decisions because we're thinking more about pleasing others than we are about doing what is right and what we truly want to do. I have nothing to say after all of that, because the last thing you said is so vitally important. And I, I would take a guess and say that probably 90% of us suffer from that. Like we want to make sure everybody's happy. And then you don't know if somebody else is happy. You're just taking, you know, again, you're not them. So you're taking a guess in terms of what you're doing, probably putting them in front of you in terms of importance and now you're not taking care of yourself for when we talked about self-care, super important, but you're hoping that they're okay. So now you're second guessing that decision, you know, should I do whatever, you know, spend more time with that, whatever it might be. 
my question is, is self-esteem the same thing as confidence? Well, confidence is a part of self-esteem. So you, so self-esteem is your overall worth, which means that you own who you are, you know your own mind, you know what your passions are, you know what you like, you know what you dislike. So self-esteem is the big picture. And this is why it affects like 82% of people out there, according to some research that I did. Now, self-confidence is an aspect of self-esteem and self-confidence just entails that that you feel good about yourself, but, but, and you're assertive that way, but you don't want to push it to where you're arrogant. Like, Hey, you know, my, my stuff doesn't stink. That, that's being arrogant, mm -hmm. but confidence is your attitude. And, and it's this feeling of, you know what, I've got this, you know, it's, it's the positive drive inside of you that, that just pushes you to where it's like, yeah, I've got this. I can do that. I can handle this problem. Those are all different types of form of confidence. And, and that's just an aspect of our self-esteem. Are there some exercises, things that we can do to start building our self-esteem? And the reason I bring that up is I've always heard that you should talk to yourself. It's okay to look in the mirror every day. Okay, maybe with not somebody else around. <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> kind of creepy and awkward, could be. Um, and just address yourself by name. You have to use your name and just talk about, you know, the good qualities that you have. Yeah, and that's such a great idea. You absolutely can do that. So you can you can stand in front of the mirror when you're by yourself so people don't think, you know, <laughs> who are you talking to? Right. But, you know, just get your alone time and that's when you really want to reflect on, on, you know, what is good about you. And that's why I always have my clients take 20 minutes every single morning and do some type of meditation. And that means picturing yourself in, you know, putting your best foot forward, uh, picture yourself happy, feeling happy, and just creating the best day possible. It's like making a blueprint for your day. It's so important and it's so effective. So that really helps with self-esteem. And also um, things that you're going to encounter during, during your life and during the day is if someone comes at you with some type of feedback that may not sit well with you, learn how to accept the feedback and get the positives out of it. So, so try not to take feedback personal, but, but teach yourself, okay, what can I get from this? You know, have enough confidence in yourself that you don't take feedback personal. And yet at the same time, look at, look at it more as a, a tool for growth and a tool for improvement and assess how you want to go about it. And then um, obviously don't, don't always be out there seeking for approval know what you're about, know what your purpose is, know what you're doing. And as long as you do it with good intentions and no malice, then just stick with your game plan. And, and don't worry about being the people pleaser because people will automatically magnetize towards you when you do carry yourself with this essence of you know, I know what I'm about. I have good self-esteem. I have confidence. It's infectious. It draws people towards you. Just believe in yourself that much that you don't have to worry about stomping on anybody. Um, of course, you want to always help people in need or if they're down in the dumps, but you don't have to make a doormat out of yourself in order to raise somebody else up. It's, it, it's just the worst thing you could do. You can raise somebody else up and, and uh, you know, make their day a little bit better as long as you're not sacrificing your own wants, needs, and desires. Powerful stuff. And the other part is, and, and none of this is easy. Yeah. It, it, you know, even waking up every day and knowing that you have so much going on and taking that time to even just practice gratitude. You know, sometimes it's not easy, but you have to stay on track and stay focused and kind of rhetorical, but be positive. You know, you take a look at, like you just said, Sherry, somebody that has a lot of self-confidence, a lot of self-esteem, 
they walk in a room and you just look and they're like, wow, I don't, you know, wow, they got it going on. Mm, wow. Wish that was me. <laughs> but if you ask them, they're probably a very positive person because they deflect all the negativity. And yeah, we all go through negative things. You know, we're dealing with situations and maybe you know, look at it in a different way. You know, somebody ticks you off and you just, you know, you're just a little angry or just something's bothering you and you're just about to send a text, write that text. Don't hit send. Put the phone mm -hmm. down, come back to it a half hour, three, whatever, <laughs> read it again and, and see how this is going to a portray you, but B what it's going to do inside. Cause all you're doing is just perpetuating that negativity. It's actually better not to send that. Yeah, it is. And that's, that's good advice too. And, and no drunk texting out there, by the way, especially if you're feeling bad, you just, yeah. it's a bad idea. Don't go there. Don't go there. But um, the one, the other thing that's really important, let's talk about this, the fear of failure. Mm. Now, this really is, a, this cripples your self-esteem so much and prevents you from moving forward, your growth, taking chances. And so many of us, so many of us suffer from the fear of failure. We don't want to fail. It's like if you're in, in rhythm and you're just like, hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And all of a sudden something happens. It really drops your opinion of yourself and your confidence and your esteem. Nice. And don't let that bring you down because failure is just a learning tool and a step to your success. That's all it is. And I think it's how we look at anything negative in life that comes our way. Don't take it too serious and to heart. Just look at it and learn from it and tell yourself, you know what? I, I needed to learn this lesson in my life so that I know how to act better the next time. And it just gets you closer to your success. So that's really, really important to keep in mind. Well, that old thing that, um, you know, you hear go around a lot, it happened for you and not to you. Don't be a victim. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can't look at yourself as being a victim. Um, you, you just, you just can't because, you know, time is so precious mm -hmm. and you, you can't get back time. You can't, I mean, once it's spent, it's spent. So don't wallow in any self-defeating thoughts, self-defeating attitudes or behaviors. Just don't spend your time there. It would be like if someone gave you a hundred bucks and, and are you going to burn it with a match or are you going to invest it or spend it on something you really want? So if you look at your attitude and your self thoughts, if you're going to wallow in depression and negativity, that's like burning that hundred dollars with a match. You're, you're, you're not getting any use out of it whatsoever. You, you can't use it. You know, it just, it just, you know, cremates your whole self-image basically. So, so get yourself out of the, that negativity by saying, you know what, I, I'm just going to learn from this. I'm moving forward because I know the goodness in me and I'm going to spend my time wise. Well, you know, to your point, you can't get that time back. Why would you yeah. waste it in those you know, what was me? Look what happened. All right. It sucks. I, okay. Being honest, life is not always, you know, easy. Um, but at the same time, you know, you just brought back a memory when it comes to money. I remember this is probably 20 something years ago. I was at a computer uh, expo and I wanted to buy my daughter a monitor and I didn't have a lot of money on me. And I looked on the ground. I was thinking about it. It was a hundred bucks. And I still remember it. And I still remember what I did with it. And I did something special, useful with it. Think of that as your time. And if you do something yeah. useful with your time, let's say spend it with somebody else, you know, take a drive and, and really be mindful of what you're doing. You won't forget that time, just like I didn't forget that hundred bucks. And they're kind of the same, you know, they say time is money, but you know, you spend it, you can't get it back usually either one of them. Yeah, exactly. And when you look at time and money, if you, you look at how you invest your time and what can you get back from it? Just like if you invest your money, what kind of returns can you get back from it? 
So, so if you want to make that correlation, I mean, that's a good way for everybody to look at it. If I invest my time and like, let's say you have your daughter and you say, you know what, time's precious. I'm going to set up a date night with my daughter or a day with my daughter, like once a month at least, where her and I are going to go do something special. The time that you take out of your life to spend with her and do that will create a wealth of memories and and just coming together in a bond. I mean, the, what you get back on your investment is precious. Yeah. So that's that's a good way for people to look at that stuff too. I'll just share with you because it's fresh in my mind. <clears throat> the last two nights, I have a daughter who's also 14 and um, she was with a friend and we like to just drive and blast loud music and I'm into what she listens to and it's all good. And I took her on a hilly road and, you know, just driving up down the road with the music. They were screaming like it was a roller coaster, like it was the greatest thing in the world. Never going to forget it. And guess what? She's like, can we do that tomorrow too? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. Oh. Of course, we rolled through Taco Bell before that and it was all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just cool. memories that you, you don't forget. And uh, you, you, unless you take the effort. You know, why waste your time and negative stuff? One thing I do want to bring up, and by the way, we're talking with Sherry Atchison, who is a, a mindset coach and just a uh, fabulous life coach to help you move your life along. ParamountMindset.com is the website. Um, we rely on other people uh -huh. for our happiness, you know, be it your partner, you know, I'm, 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 I'm nothing with that person or, you know, people around you. You are the only one that you can rely on. And I hate to say that and bring it, you know, to that, that point, but you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You're, yeah. you can rely on you till the, the last day of your life. Maybe not otherwise, yeah. you never know. Yeah. Oh, that is so important. Here's what happens is that when you meet a person and they affect your life and they cause this emotion in you. And a lot of times it's like the serotonin effect where you're just happy and wow, good times, good memories. And it makes you feel so good because, you know, you're going about your life and all of a sudden you meet somebody and they, and it's like, Ooh, you know, uh, this is amazing. I want to feel this way every single day. I'm happy, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, is then we're attaching our happiness to another person. Well, then what happens is when something goes wrong with that relationship or there, you know, you argue or whatever, it makes you feel so bad and you lose your happiness, you lose yourself because you've been attached and, and actually handed them the responsibility to make you happy. And, and that's why there's so many problems with relationships, which, by the way, I, I just have to mention in August, I'm doing a master class on relationships. Mm. So this kind of fed right into that. I had no intention of that, but hey, it happened. But here's the thing. You need to figure out how to be happy yourself because nobody can make you happy but yourself. And when you do find out how to create your own happiness and your own self-worth and what you truly enjoy and what you are happy about, then when you are in a relationship with another person where you're in an argument or you know things aren't as rosy as they were, you actually can handle this type of conflict in a much less stressful manner and more clear minded. And so that you're not losing yourself in order to please them. And this is a big trap people get into. It's like, okay, I'll do whatever you say. I, I just want to make it better. And you end up being so incredibly unhappy because of that. So it's a trap. You have to be careful. And you might be unaware of it. You're just, once again, being a people pleaser, or if you're not saying to the other person during that conflict, uh, I'll do anything to make you happy if, you know, your guys are distant or whatever, but in the back of your mind, oh my gosh, what if something happens and then they walk away or whatever? Well, you know what? It could happen. You not, you have no idea what's going to come, you know, in when you open the door tomorrow. You really don't, but what is guaranteed yeah. to do? So you need to, you know, focus on yourself and make sure that you're happy within your skin. Um, and then, you know what? It would just make your relationships even better from there, from that point forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can survive too if something happens or if you break up. 
It isn't so traumatic and devastating. It's not that you aren't going to miss them or you have that loss of love feeling, but at the same time, you don't lose all of you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the one thing you want to try to avoid at all costs. You work with a lot of people. Do you work with couples as well? I have not worked with couples, but I am. But that's what I'm going to do with this relationship. Um, that thing that I'm having in August. And it's actually working with um, people coming together, blended families, because there's always conflict around that. And, and so I have been uh, putting together my program. I'm really, really excited. And it I work with groups of people. So working with a couple is no different than working with a group or working with people individually. I just do what I do. So yeah, it wouldn't be an issue yeah. at all. What, what types of people do you work with? You know, people come to you, you know, give, give some examples of uh, challenges that they're going through. Well, I'm actually a hypnotherapist on top of my coaching. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of hypnotherapy on people around the world and um, people have come to me for depression, anxiety, um, just not having a voice. Um, I've had like three clients that came to me because they have narcissistic parents. Those are a little bit more difficult to deal with. You know, Uh, the interesting thing you just said that, excuse me, and I got to share, I never even thought of that having a narcissistic parent. I always think of it in terms of a relationship. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And more times than not, it's the mom. And my mom was horrible, narcissistic mother, horrible. And, you know, I didn't realize that until like I got into my adult years and stuff like that, but it's, it's detrimental to how they treat their children. And, and when you're a narcissist, pretty much you're going to live the rest of your life being that way. It's up to us who are not and learning how to exist, especially with a parent. If you have a partner, it, you know, more times than not, it's best to walk away. It really is because you can't change them. You can't fix them. If it's a parent, you have to learn really healthy boundaries. Like I'm not going to let you talk to me that way anymore, or I won't come around. You know, you have to establish stern boundaries with parents like that. Crazy question for you, Sherry. So you said your mom was a narcissist and, you know, apparently that's uh, big for a lot of people. And especially when you're going through it as a child. So that really is formulating who you are and who you're going to be moving forward. Do you find that a lot of people coming from that background also choose partners who are narcissists just because they're familiar with it? You're exactly right. And this is so unfortunate. And I actually did the exact same thing in my life. So, uh, you know, there's no doubt when you are with a narcissistic parent and it's really this horrible type of atmosphere, this abuse, this neglect, you're not good enough. And that is called bad love. So Mm -hmm. when you're turned loose and you're out there, you actually find the bad love because that's comfortable to you. You know how to handle it. You've been there. Whereas if someone with good love comes along, which I did this, it was like, I, I'm so uncomfortable with this. I, I don't know how to handle it. And I actually sabotaged the relationship because they were good. And I didn't think I was worthy of having good love. So I went for the bad love, you know, because I knew what that was all about. And we don't intentionally do it. It just, that's what happens. And that's why therapy is so important because, because you have to learn your self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth and boundaries so that you can let go of that bad love and really get somebody good in your life. Every time you say bad love, uh, we have like a minute left, but I think of, there's a song by Eric Clapton, had enough, bad love. <laughs> it's I know it. <laughs> I listen to it all the time at the gym. Um, Final question, based on what we're talking about. Do we often pick a partner that is very similar to one of our parents or both? Does that happen a lot? Like, what would the percentages be? I'm just, I'm kind of curious. You know, I don't have the exact stats in front of me, but with so many clients that I've worked with, I could tell you that the stats based upon the, the clients I've worked with, 
have been between 80 and 90 percent of the time they pick a parent or they pick a partner that mm -hmm. resembles something in their parent because that's the first love they knew was from a parent whether it was good or bad and yeah, that's you're what right they're used to. and here's the yeah. challenge figuring out why you pick this partner based on your parent because in in you it was a parent that it was narcissistic traits but if you're <laughs> not really sure how do you know and that's where somebody like you is extremely valuable uh especially on the hypnotherapy end because if yeah. we don't uncover it in terms of uh life coaching hypnotherapy will probably you know peel back the layers there and work and um i've had hypnotherapy for the first time before we met i might have shared with you last time uh at two months ago really powerful went back to my childhood i knew exactly where i wanted to go and where i wanted to connect the dots but you know work in progress we all are We're on a journey um the website is paramountmindset.com i can't believe how fast the time went today i looked over i'm like it, it can't be right but you know i i, I know. we struck a chord here i know i can't believe it either i love talking with you it's just we we have a great conversation so and i get to talk to you next week too so i'm excited yeah looking forward to it and you know i love talking with you because you're so clear it's it's <laughs> you know I, a lot of times, you know, I might hear something and say, oh, you know, let me figure that out. No, it's crystal clear. Um, and you know yourself too. You're fantastic. Sherry Atchison, thanks for being with us today and uh, looking forward to getting together sometime soon. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.